I can't wait for this to get underway because I want to see who moves forward. Goodra Goose. Of course, the three Kratoses that plague our screens week in and week out, it feels like, and just grief <laughs> grinders. Left, right, and center. Yeah, <laughs> yeah good, the Gudra grinders, putting us casters in a grinder with those names. <laughs> and I don't think they even feel a little bad about it. Uh, <laughs> but here we are, another tournament, another batch of Kratoses. It's actually not another, it's the same one. But they're going up against a team named Goat, who has an absolutely terrifying roster put together. I mean, Rex, as Yeet Fan, Demon Overlord. I mean, this is unbelievable. This squad is terrifying. Yeah, I'm, there is no slashes on that side, of course. We've got a world champ v world champ scenario here going on. Goat going to lock down Zacian very quickly. And it looks like Overlord being the one to select it might mean that they're the one that's going to be playing it. Yep. Uh, going to be exciting to see Overlord on the Goat Pokemon uh, currently. And ooh, look at this. A early changeup for Gudra Goose locking in that Comfey. They do not want Overlord to have that patented duo Pokemon alongside them. Yeah, unsurprising. Um, Overlord is one of the few individuals that has made Comfy feel like a real character. Mm -hmm. um, and especially when it's been in the hands of uh, great support players. You know, ELO, if you're thinking of UCS, uh, specifically on this team, uh, I believe Rex was the one playing it last time. So, mm -hmm. I mean, take it away. Take it away because the Gooja Goos know they have some ballers as well. Yep. And, of course, they banned Blissey. So, ban Blissey, pick Comfey is going to sort of put Goat into a specific spot for healing. Namely, I, I Hoopa, or if they're really cooking Clefable, I, I guess they're kind of the two options that you could be working with. However, when you're running Pokemon like Inteleon and even the Zorark that you're currently hovering, uh, Clefable doesn't really have that same merit. Uh, into Leafeon, though, I think Clefable could do some work. But the Hoopa is the Pokemon that is selected. Uh, a lot of Pokemon can benefit from this. Namely, Asnable and Overlord, I think that'll be some big swings. Very curious to see where the Gujar Goos go here in the final yeah. pick. And it looks like they're going to be putting them in the Dragapult spin cycle here. Might be <laughs> dancing our way to the grand finals as the Gujar Goos. Okay, if Dragapult ever made a dance, it would absolutely... I know Dragon Dance exists or whatever, blah, blah, blah. I think it absolutely should be spin cycle. I think that is hilarious. Um, that is a hilarious dance name, and I think someone should make it. That's content right there. That's a Unite TikTok is the spin cycle. <laughs> that is indeed that's the unite mike's <laughs> dance move is the dragapult spin cycle okay. we nailed it yep. uh i don't know if you all saw but snacks with snacks baller content piece spin cycle dance move that's the next one okay yeah everybody if you haven't already um estimation mark youtube and chat if you want the youtube link everything from unite mics gets posted there after the events that happen live here on the twitch channel so if you want to check out other unite mics mayhem evenings where you've had all these amazing teams play or if you want to go check out the podcast or even some fun content like snacks with snacks that is the spot to go definitely want to make a big push on the youtube channel in the off season I am shocked they let him let me put that up on our own channel. Yeah. I, re I really thought the full version was going to get uh, thrown to the weeds. Uh, but nope, they let me just pick that thing up, dust it off, and post it real quick. So let's go. There's a lot about that piece I'm shocked that they allowed. But <laughs> again, it exists and it's out there. And if you want to really enjoy yourself for just underneath 10 minutes or so, I think it is, uh, it's a great great little spot you did good you ate some great food you ate some bad food but the entire time you looked good doing it and do snacks i can't really ask you for much more than that thanks i appreciate you but right now go gooja goose to see who goes to our grand final of uh, unite mike's mayhem season four finale here quickly clearing here is of course kratos and kratos machisel <laughs> and jl going to be taken to that top path where those two have lived together the whole oh. time we've watched them play that's right. Also, Yeaster is trainer and Demon yeah. is Yeet fan. That is right. I totally forgot up until this moment. Well, Rex and Overlord make it easy to forget when I can watch this gameplay. Early K opener from Overlord. Make that a double as they KO another Kratos for their troubles. Yeah, Overlord giving a little bit of wake up call saying, I've been playing a little My Hero Academia, but I did not forget how to press <laughs> these buttons, my friend. Get two quick KOs, get some points on the board. And really looking good early, which is what you expect out of that player. 
I can't wait to see the BR skills in practice in Thea Sky Ruins. It's going to be an exciting match, obviously. And most notably, it's wild that I could see Overlord on Zacian and actually still be the most pumped about Trainer on Zorark. I freaking love this player Pokemon duo. They are so, so good. Right now, they're playing it safe until they hit the go button. They KO those wild Pokemon and then they streak in for the execute. I mean, that was just a great play. So cool. You can see exactly what they were doing. I mean, uh, Trainer went in. They were going after the birds while Overlord was just hanging out and going for the full on player engage. And they absolutely got there. Quick hoop a pivot to get Overlord into the bottom path. And all of a sudden, they're running roughshod down there. Yeah, ridiculous so far. Uh, nope. Uh, trainer getting in yet another group of stacks. But that Phantom evolving at a Trivenant at the picture-perfect time is going to secure that and take it away from Trainer. So nice little secure by Eggnoob. Finally hitting that level 5. I bet they feel a lot better in this map currently. Yeah, but something I got to highlight here. We got an Eevee lagging behind on the side of Goat. They're having trouble getting this Umbreon to tick up here. And finally it does. But it doesn't matter when their high octane offense is rocking and rolling. And they are putting the absolute screws to the Goo Dragoos. <laughs> and they have not been able to find their footing whatsoever. <laughs> Rex told the squad that this tournament was for money. And they certainly have shown up to play. Uh, we have a Chisel trying to escape with that Comfy in tandem. But the damage seems to be relentless as that Lapras is KO'd. But JL able to escape the clutches of both Overlord and Trainer. Yeah, they were, they were going nowhere near to try and pick up that Lapras. There's no <laughs> shot. JL hopped off and said, good luck, my chiseler. I'm out of here. <laughs> and they were out of there indeed. I'm shocked the Comfy's staying in the pocket, probably because my chisel is here now. So they actually have a ride to take. But out of there is Trainer. Yep, Heat Fan finds a KO in the bottom path as well. <laughs> this Inteleon is uh, currently invisible to our opponents, but hovering around this Registeel. Drops down to about half HP already, and with no presence from Gujar Goose, that is all going to go over to Go. Yeah, they've got too much work to do in other parts of the map, right? They have wild Pokemon up here ready to take. And meanwhile, I mean, Trainer is so massive, Jeez. and Rex is there for the support that they can just hold that thing down together, and they're getting their experience by taking the body here, Zoinks, mm -hmm. and they look very solid early. Honestly, they're down on the scoreboard, but it certainly doesn't feel like it. Yeah, not at all. Uh, they're down by 10 points, but honestly, shout out to Eknoop and, and Stockings for making that bottom path look somewhat okay. Uh, Overlord and Trainer certainly have not showed up there yet. Big secure by Stockings, though. That amazing little Leaf Blade followed up by the Emerald Two-Step to KO Trainer. And that is two massive KOs. Tons of experience getting poured into the hands of Gujar Goose, and they're going to make that thing work here. The Dragapult coming alive yet again, getting two quality KOs, and all of a sudden, 169 to 55, the level lead is eviscerated right they're still uh, uh, they're not even behind anymore there's two level seven sitting over on the side of goat and now they have a big time score lead as well yeah i mean the comfe itself allows the side of gumi or gutra goose to be a little more aggressive and just a little more uh, i don't know bold in their rotations and due to that stocking is able to get up close and personal to that regia lucky get the secure but they get a whole lot more than just that yeah, they get a ton, and now this Parish Song is really coming alive with the nice damage follow-up by the rest of the Gudra Goose. They need to watch, though, because they're about to have their lunch stolen right off the table, and this Dragapult might be the one that crossfire as the trainers look for an engagement. They take the buff, and they're, and they're going in. Excuse me, they didn't quite get the buff. They used their Unite move, but nice support by Stockings to get the KO. Yeah, Unite moves used, uh, I believe, only by the Zorark. So Dragapult and mm -hmm. Leafeon hold on to theirs, and they're able to turn that KO. So slightly favorable exchange going over to Gujar Goose. Meanwhile, I mean, Machizel getting a KO by playing on the opposite side of the map. Nice Horn Leash by Egg Noob to try and get onto their side. They get mean looks, but on their goal pads, so not too concerned about that. Meanwhile, the next basement, Reggie, is here. Dragapult picks up the Hula Hoop, and now they're getting the pressure put on them by Overlord. And they're spin cycling everybody through. Tons of damage getting reined in, hitting the dance move, hitting the Dougie or something, because <laughs> they are eviscerating these health bars very quickly. Nice Sun catches all three. No follow-up, though. Back the other way. Stockings with the big Solar Blade getting two. And now, all of a sudden, Gudra Goose, I mean, Goats, Goats who? They're walking away with the Goats head like Baphomet Worship right now because they are taking this game over. 
Yeah, Overlord called out by both Egg Noob and Stockings as well. They eventually KO'd the Regirock, but they got so much more. You're right, the Biles just, the bodies just piled up around that Reggie as they took down member after member of Go. And look at this rotation from a chisel. The Lapras Unite move cruises through, has a big knock up onto Overlord, and they're KO'd. Now a chisel getting into the part of the action. KO streak of two there for the Zora because they use their Unite move and catch another one. Four players down out of nowhere from the Gujar Goose. And I'll tell you what, Goat needs to leverage this thing in short order. Liquidation comes out. They get the credit for that. Last KO is down. And of course, ekes out the Penta out from oh. under Trainer, which is truly a dagger. But all of a sudden, Goat is back in the lead. Oh, man. These two players played on Amaterasu all year long together, and you can see why. I mean, they look so, so good. The amazing assassin play of Trainer in tandem with the honestly picture-perfect attacker play from Yeet Fan. They can, they can split off to go and stack. They can take aggressive plays to make sure they find the last hits. I mean, really, this attacker player can do it all. And they look, they look so solid. Again, there you can really see the comfortability they have moving across the map together and uh, able to take big time engagement. It's a nice Unite move by Machizel coming through trying to take that, but it's ultimately Overlord on the Zashin that seals up that Reggie Alecki. And now they're putting the pressure on. They wanted, Machizel wanted the KO, but they couldn't quite close the door on it. And now it's Trainer getting one back the other way with who else? But Yeet fan, so they're able to get that done. Two players down for Gujar Goose, and all of a sudden they're trying to catch this Reggie Alecki, but I think it just hit. Yeah, uh, Reggie Lucky does hit Socking and Jail, not able to shut down that push. Overlord is going to charge in, try to get this 42. Uh, they have a lot of enemies to deal with. They are going to get KO'd. An 18 second respawn timer means they will still be here before uh, the Rayquaza appears. Yeah, and guess what? That goal, home goal zone is open, which means the Yamada is also open for Go. True which means that Hoopa can kind of hide near the goal zone, use their Unite move, pull the whole team through, getting a bunch of scores in the home goal zone where the focus of Gujar Goose is on the Rayquaza. Yeah, they're going to need to... Um they're going to need to get a little bit more points in pocket to, I think, make that strategy viable. Inteleon mm -hmm. and Umbreon have full pockets, but with Zorark with only four, Hoopa with no points, I mean, it makes it a little bit more risky. And Wow, no, the fight is already going to be kicking off around the Ray Pit. I mean, the liquidation comes out on Agnew. They almost have no health bar left. They're trying to get stunned down. Trevor and Unite back the other way. They're trying to get into the middle, and there's one player down for the Guja Goose, and it's the Dragapult. That's not the target that they wish would fall in right now. Agnew is still trying to find an opportunity. They get KO'd finally, but we stayed standing for a long time. Trainer uses their Unite move. They want to pivot in, try and find another body here, but it's really the Guja Goose that are falling like dominoes. Rayquaza is so low. They're going to try and make a pair play as the Guja Goose, but it's the Goats that are going to seal it up and take all of the KOs, all the bodies they want. And holy smokes, you wanted a Penta, baby. That Inteleon has the golden gun, James Pond for real. <laughs> yes, the golden gun Penta is here. I love the way you call that, dude, Snacks. Yeet fan making it look easy here in our game number one. It was an extremely close match up until that point, but when it's all left of a chisel and JL to get the secure, well, that's GOAT's time to shine. They get to work, take down member after member. Felt like every single part of that team fight was down to 1v1s or 2v2s, and just in those scenarios, GOAT is just going to win those games every single time. They look amazing in that team fight. They really did. And of course, now we're withering down to this garbage time as we're just trying to get more more numbers up. Another KO. The whole team is Rinse Dragapult walking out just to get into the, all the static here. The Unite moves are happening. If I am GOAT, I am feeling pretty good again uh, about this game. And honestly, when you have a team like GOAT, when you have a player like Overlord, right? That's like the Vikings back in the 90s, if I can bend your ear. Everybody's focused on Ramsey Moss, but Chris Carter's a Hall of Famer themselves, right? So you sure. can't take your eye off of any other player on this GOAT team because they are going to get it done somehow, and they just delivered in the big way, specifically off the back of Yeet and Trainer. <laughs> I, I got that reference, and I'm sure everyone else did too. Ah, uh, wow. What a showing from Go. And of course, you are exactly right. I mean, if it's not one player, it's another. Takeovers left and right. What an all star roster they have put together for this season's mayhem. And look at that 929 to 190 against the team the caliber of Gujarkus. And this GOAT team's just built different, Deuce Next. It really is, and honestly, they found themselves on the back foot for uh, a portion of that game as Gujar Goose was finding a lot of purchase. Stockings coming in, getting a quick KO streak of two. Egg Noob with the pivot as well, working in tandem with their GT teammate. 
And it really felt like that was going to be the Gujra Goo's opportunity to make some magic happen. Machizel as well was hitting clutch Parish songs and mm -hmm. with a follow-up was there as well to land those KOs. Um, but ultimately, that there was a, it was a bend not break moment for Goat, and they were able to just flex right back into their uh, true form. Yeah. Back to the dominance I think we all expect from that team, and it looked looked really good, like you just mentioned. Overlord, the only member with the six digit damage. However, it is more of a shock when they don't hit those numbers, no matter what Pokemon they're on. But I mean, they are playing with the likes of Yeet Fan Trainer <laughs> Rex. I mean, so many many amazing players form up this squad. Asnable's Umbreon, by the way, I mean, it's so hard to like talk about every player on this team because they're all sure. so freaking good, but Asnable's Umbreon is also just like, he's one of those defender players that I swear when they are locked in, they just don't make mistakes. Like they, you can mm -hmm. just count on Asnable always. They're not using their Unite moves too early. They're catching out multiple support Unites in response. Their play calls and mean links are good. Their snarls are great to counter anti-CC moments. Like, I mean, Asnable just really clicks their buttons in the right spots. And I appreciate that. Yeah, I gotta adjust something in the chat here. Beast by Byron, uh, do have the <laughs> chat wasn't alive during the Randy Moss era. If you consider yourself a fan of the NFL or a football fan at all, and you don't know the Randy Moss Chris Carter dynamic, uh, <laughs> that's like saying I don't know the the Scotty Pippen Michael Jordan dynamic. Right? You don't have to be alive to understand how that dynamic worked. It's a valid reference. Y'all griefing me out here. <laughs> it's a valid reference. You know it's a valid reference when you have to shout into the void. It's a valid reference. It's super valid. <laughs> absolutely know you're in the right old man waves fisted clouds um, anyway uh i'm on your side dudes next i swear <laughs> you're in chicago maybe i should have gone with the bulls reference yeah that would have been good that would have been good um i would have got that one more so um but i think i was fully alive for the randy moss storyline don't worry <laughs> randy moss played into the 2000s like what are we talking about here <laughs> what year is it okay um uh, <laughs> game oh my number God, two. I'm locked right now <laughs> Game number two is going to be happening very shortly between these two squads. Gudra Goose has elected into that first pick position. Dragapult showed its face again, Doom Snacks. Mm -hmm. This time, didn't quite find the value it had. Okay, it didn't find the value in the final team fight. It got eliminated, I think, at that two-minute mark. The bell rang, Dragapult was gone. But until right. that moment, I think it was looking pretty clean. I, I thought Kratos was putting mm -hmm. on a pretty nice performance on this Dragapult. But um, is it just trying to force something to work, in your opinion? Is there some outside value to it? I mean, I like it when there's no real options to lock it down. And, and so far, they've been playing into that. Yeah, I think the difference is it plays better with the massive kind of damage that Azashian deals on their engagement when they go in in Sacred Sword uh, than like a Lapras, a Lapras with the Parish Song ticks. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's kind of a difference maker there um, specifically. And it didn't seem like they had the way for Goat to stay out of the hyperspace holes, right? Uh, I think before they were using a Blissey that was really kind of egg bombing those things to making sure nobody could really reset. My memory might be off already. I'm so flustered from the Randy Moss Chris Carter situation that we've got going on here. Um, so I think the main difference was who that engagement tool was. And I don't think for that specific purpose, Lapras fit that mold as well as Zashi did the first time we saw it. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I could see that. Just the way the cards fell, it felt a little more awkward this time around. I could definitely get behind that. Well, we'll have to see if they want to run it back or they'll go with a whole brand new strategy. Either way, it's a new game, a new look. Gudra Goos are going to be on the left-hand side of your screen, whereas Goat will be taking up that orange side or the right-hand side. I, I'm interested to see where Gudra Goos goes. I would be shocked if... Um, if Goat doesn't ban Zacian, Gudra Goose is for sure taking Zacian, right? Mm -hmm. That's just where Machizel wants to be right now. Yep. Wow. Interesting. Okay. I mean, Stalking's Leafeon has been really good, and now they're going to kind of force them into a more traditional attacker pick, which I think Goat really thinks they have the advantage in, in that scenario, especially if they can get Inteleon. So I, I think this is a strategy of ban stalking's kind of alternate pick, take Inteleon first pick, and kind of force that Mew versus Inteleon fight in the bot path. I was about to say, I, I kind of love Goat going Lapras uh, Slowbro. Um, 
because it just gives them such shutdown tools mm -hmm. for anywhere Gooch or Goose goes with their draft. And then Goat can just like counter draft the rest of the way. Yeah. Um, but I mean, quality, quality support, quality defender here. And it's always nice to have a slow bro when you're looking at overlord trainer and yeet on the <laughs> other side of the uh, other side of the map. Yeah. And, and Ignu slow bro has been a recipe for success so far in tonight's tournament. I think when they played earlier, I think it was a huge difference maker on that Pokemon in particular. So, uh, no, no sweat there when you have a solid defender like that, but Astable is going to get the Umbreon yet again. And look at this. The Pikachu is locked in for goat i'm surprised we haven't been seeing more pikachu to be honest i think it's okay. fairly strong right now uh, just across the board um it has a great kind of set of tools it can use mean look into it like <laughs> even a thunder is like vicious um so when you have that kind of action i i kind of like the the selection here it's going to be a different look and now they have a pseudo, you know, you have a pseudo Electro Ball on the side of Gujar Goose to track down wherever Overlord ends up, which is a Blastoise, so it's not going to be as great as you might have thought. <laughs> but Pikachu also has that uh, availability if that's the direction they want to go, you know, like Volt Tackle, Electro Ball mm -hmm. type stuff. Is this Inteleon Jungle then? Is is that what I'm looking at? Like, I assume Trainer is going to want to bring that Pokemon in and hit that level 7 as quickly as possible. And and then you just allow Yeet Fan to cook in the bottom path with this Pikachu instead. Uh, no Hollow Air Pikachu yet. Oh, I guess it's not shown on this preview screen. <laughs> I cast this game so much and I still don't know. Um, oh, okay. I actually see chat saying Blastoise Jungle, question mark. So Overlord has the ability to do that, but I think you'd still want to play this top path. You're going to lose to Machizel early. That is going to happen, but you're going to need to really rely in a late game push yeah oh <laughs> overlord might lose air quotes uh but they're still going to somehow hit like level nine at six minutes right True. fully Facts. stacked up yeah. like it's going to be goofy silly <laughs> um and look at that uh yeet just taking a, a casual derby hat on the pikachu not getting too crazy with all the pikachu hollow wear that's available to them Yes, um, some would say a man about town hat. Uh, Pikachu <laughs> looks like they are headed out to a farm social or something like that. I don't know. I uh, This is what it screams to me when I see that Pikachu with that hat. That or a nice game of cricket. That or a nice game of cricket has been called. <laughs> I'm kind of watching through here, and based on how these compositions, do you think there's a world where we see a surf, uh, a surf stories out of Overlord just to really help with these Hoopa portals? Because they don't really have another tool to keep them from resetting here yeah it could be it could be like an all-in push on this kind of anti-heels composition really shut down the hoop at every angle um that is good it's just sometimes you got a question is it a win more strategy like i mean they're already in triple defender territory do you want to go in on all three tank builds or are you going to start to lack damage and that's the only spot that i think that could be lacking if they go that way that's true or are we going to see you know like the the pseudo healing uh, mean look wish uh, Umbreon, right? Which kind oh, of I think feel we for like sure a, see that. Yeah, so we'll see like kind of that, that off tank, kind of like we did UCS Season 1 Blissey, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would have to imagine Rex goes with that healing, and look at that! Overlord and Rex combined for a knockout onto Machizel. A nice little scenario. I mean, Jail is able to take the revenge KO, but still, that advantage is pretty, looking pretty good. Kratos with a big engage on the Fletchender, though, and an 18 score to the top path. That's looking pretty fantastic to start our match off. I somehow missed this talent flame be chosen and into triple defender it looks a little tough. So these these engagements are going to have to be very well calculated because it's going to be tough to dive in and find the targets you want without getting buckled by the defenders on the backside. And uh, there we go. Proof in the pudding here is they're quickly eliminated before they can catch a reset. And all of a sudden, Goat is sieging this goal zone. Trainer with a casual triple at 830. Uh, no big deal. Drizzile putting in some work. Not even the final evolution. Still just showing off, honestly, at this moment in time. I mean, yes, the Talonflame was surprising. It, to, their, to be fair to them, it was selected when they were currently double defender because they closed out their drafts with the Blastoise, which I would have right. to imagine is in response to the Talonflame. But your point stands regardless this is not an easy match for the talent flame to pop off but it will make pikachu and inteleon's life a little bit harder oh brave bird talent okay 
No fear. Brave Bird Talon <laughs> going straight in, taking out the Umbry on there with support from the team. Uh, I love it. Let's, I want to see it work. I really hope it, it pans out so we can force these two teams into a game three. Yeah, it's fun, fun, fun until Daddy takes the T-Bird away, though, you know? Uh, and so if Umbreon or Italian get a catch, I think that's going to be an extremely difficult situation for Kratos to make it out. Brave Bird's kind of one of those all-in moves. However, it can pay off once you find that KO on the War Turtle. Not going to get anything more than that, though, as Trainer with a quick rotation gets the response knockout. No, that Firebird found themselves in the bottom of a lake after a car crash. They get smothered by the liquidations as soon as Trainer gets up in there. And now with the spacing that they can actually get from Gujra Goose players, specifically Machizel and the Zacian, they don't even have to really concern themselves with getting engaged on as they're able to just take some of those birds and pivot down to this basement Reggie very quickly. Mm -hmm. Both teams going to be making their rotations, some slower than others, as you just mentioned, as Gujra Goose eventually are arriving to this point in time. Uh, JL only at level 6, so nowhere close to Unite move, but they are able to portal reset away from the danger. Yeah, and putting some pressure on the backside is that Brave Bird Talonflame, and that's a Talonflame that didn't hit a wall, can you believe it? But it hit the wall of the Team Goat as they folded that bird up like laundry, and now they're putting back through. Gujra Goose forced to pivot. Nice reset. Eggnoob comes through with the Surf, gets some spacing, and somehow this Regirock is still on the map. It was a sick maneuver. The problem is acrobatics plus Unite move exists for Inteleon, and they were able to just get one good auto into that Talonflame, who was already at such low HP. Acidable caught out. JL finds the KO there, but a big Surf from Overlord. They went with your advice, Tube Snacks. We're seeing a Surf's choice. I love it. That spacing is going to be critical, specifically for the liquidation uh, Inteleon here, once it starts raining in those shots. So, Goat looking to pivot. Looking very good up on the scoreboard as well and have a level lead. So as long as they don't just hemorrhage all this back in the hands of Gujra Goose, they're going to be in good shape. I think this is going to come down into some final moments to sort of a war of attrition or who can last longer scenario. And in that, I favor a whole lot of GOAT's compositions. But both compositions are sort of all-in built comps. Your Blastoise goes in. Talonflame tries to charge in. Great little Umbreon Unite in response. But still, Kratos comes away with the KO. And very low on HP. They're trying to dart out of the way. The Surf closes the gap and gets the KO and ticks Overlord into Blastoise. And now the kid can go to work. A little bit behind my six-minute prediction here, but I don't <laughs> feel too bad about it since that's the way they just got it. That looked nice. Wow, that is a whole lot of damage raining in from both Yeet Fan and Asnable as the Zlapras Express does the knockup. Pikachu does the big hits, but neither one of them find the KO as now much Chisel's job is try to take down one of these three beefy defenders. They are successful with the support of Hoopa there as now they're getting all over this goal zone. JL's going to try and get some points in here, but the, oh, the um, Inteleon Unite comes out, forces JL to start scrambling here. They dip back through the liquidation, going to find their mark regardless. And now all of a sudden, Machizel's on the backside on their side of the map. Nice slow beam, good engagement, quick KO, and good experience. So Gujra Goos are taking any opportunity they can find here because they know they are fighting uphill. Yeah, I, who needs a jack button when you can just press Surf and then use your Unite move? I like that play from Egg Noob quite a bit. Machizel trying to 1v2 in this scenario, but Yeet Fan doing a really good job of peeling far back and allowing Asnable to take all that aggro damage. There's no value there for Machizel, so they need to immediately rotate and retreat. We have another Reggie spawning in the bottom path, but Overlord is taking a 1v2 scenario, and they're going to drop their Unite. Yeah, they have to, right? Just to get a little bit of shield and get a hope that they can get out of dodge. Mutant wasn't there for the follow-up, so they're still in good shape. Goat looking to pivot, and wow, we have the basement reg ice here. Pikachu Unite comes out. They're trying to rein in some damage. Who's going to take this thing? It is none other than Asnable for Goat. Is they're going to use that to pressure forward. And look at that Lapras coming through, hitting their Parish Song, getting all the spacing in the world they need to get those points in. And Goat's lead now is getting large. Right spot, right time. Unfortunately, the Talonflame just locked in place by these defenders uh, and cannot flame sweep all the way back towards their second tier goal zone. Uh, yet again, Kratos comes up a little bit short on this Pokemon, but uh, and Goat holding on to a very, very considerable lead. Despite all these team fights kind of being back and forth, with Goat having, I'd say, the majority of the advantage, but Gujra Goose having some value as well, they have not found a way to get on the scoreboard, Dupes next. Only 23 points, and we're headed into three minute mark no really and you can credit asinable in the bottom path for yeah. that because they have just been all over that thing not letting any signs of life to the Gujra goose the opportunity to score here 
And this Talon frame has to use all of their manu maneuverability to get out as they leave the Zashin up to get put in the blender. Poor Machizel. They catch it from four players at once. And Goat now is just un unconcerned, going straight for the goal zone. Mean looking, trying to go for the 1v2. Coming up as the liquidation and points are going in. You certainly can't Brave Bird out of a mean look. So <laughs> despite being trapped in that sinister stare, you are still locked in place. Even if you have a giant mobility move like Brave Bird. Oh my word. Zoshin almost goes down as well. The Pikachu damage with the healing stoppage in tandem can be so ridiculously powerful. I mean, E-Fan playing this Pikachu and making it look meta again, truly. Yeah, it's, it can't be undersold. Pikachu's yeah. solid right now. It really mm -hmm. is. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised after team watching, uh, teams watch Goat play this Pokemon, not take a look at it again. We've got a Rayquaza here. Nice Solar Beam comes through the chunk Asimble a little bit, but I don't think they're too concerned with the danger they've got going on. Goat's got over a 100 point lead, so they're really got to put the pressure on Guja Goose to make something happen. Overlord quickly chunked by Solar Beam, though. Yeah, you have back cap potential from a few of your Pokemon on the side of Gudra Goose. I definitely would try to leverage that, especially with Hoopa. I mean, you have JL to just bring him back anyways. It's not like uh, the side of Goat is going to have any kind of rip or secure potential, or maybe secure will be there, but rip potential on the other side running this triple defender. That's why you see Kratos rotating towards the bottom path right now. Yeah, you can actually see they're looking for an opportunity to decide to come back in. Maybe a, lot, a couple low HP bars, and they think they can make a difference here. They're waiting for their opportunity to engage. It's going to be a Brave Bird, but who's going to be the target? That's the question. Moving through, we stunned out on Asimble. Surf comes through, and now they're looking to pivot. On the backside is Overlord, who uses their uh, Hydro Pump to push them out of the goal. Excuse me, out of the reset. They can't quite get everybody. Pouring back through, Asimble catches a Surf and says, I'm a Water type. That doesn't impact me. They use their Unite move. They're pushing back into the back line, but Chisel gets shoved out by that little Tidal wave peeling back as Rex picking up some Aos energy and they're gonna reset and now Goat's looking across the way and they're feeling pretty good they just wasted a ton of time and their whole team is standing well look how many Unite moves Gucci Goose has though right I mean they just dropped two both Mew and Hoopa use rather defensively and Inteleon takes out the Zacian that is a huge play they didn't even have time to use the Unite move Overlord finds stockings as well and all of a sudden Goat turns what I thought was gonna be a favorable situation into an amazing one for them yeah, Liquidation comes through. They're going to try and close the door on JL. They're successful. Asimble is looking for Kratos. Kratos caught on the backside as a Talonflame. And uh, <laughs> I'll tell, tell you what, <laughs> flying types are weak to thunder. And they get absolutely buckled. I mean, they, start, they tried to step to Goat. And they found out that they're paralyzed from the waist down. They couldn't go anywhere with that Pikachu. And now Goat is putting in those burgers. And they're going to win themselves this game. All right, your finals has now been decided. Goat taking down Gudra Goose means that our finals is going to be between Goat and Curse. That is going to be an exciting one. And, well, so was this series. I mean, Gudra Goose mm -hmm. definitely, I think, in game number two, got beat a little bit harder than in game number one. But they had moments of brilliance. That Talonflame got five KOs in total. That's a good one. And shout out JL for having top KOs in the on their side. Not in the lobby. Uh, that goes over to Trainer with 15 KOs on their Inteleon, but still JL putting in some work on that on that Hoopa. Yeah, I mean, those liquidations are nothing to scoff at. That's just what Jeez. it's about. And that's why sometimes you just, like, in your mind, you lock up liquidation. You just have to get within some sort of reasonable range and stay protected, and you can just eviscerate health bars. And that's exactly what they did. And I can't say this enough. I mean, trailing shortly behind Stockings and uh, Trainer is Yeet Fan on this Pikachu at 83,000 damage, and they were all over the map making their presence felt. Yeah, the Yeet fan looking amazing on this Pikachu. Uh, shout out to them for giving Trainer the Inteleon so we could see what Central Inteleon looks like in a 15 KO game like that. I think they got a Penta in like one of the first half of this matchup. It was sick. Um, so and Trainer getting one too in the previous game. So incredible work from Goat. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be seeing more from them very very soon. Shout out to Gudra Goose though, or Gudra Goose for showing up to our tournament today and putting on an ama amazing performance, taking down one team in exile and making it look good against goat ah dupe snacks i'm excited and we have an even more exciting game coming up after this it's going to be cursed versus goat right on the other side of this break